Hello my friends, today I'm going to show you the basics of how to design a book cover in Affinity Publisher. My name is Olivio, I'm a professional designer and I want to thank all of my patrons who support me and make these videos possible. Super important, thank you for that and let's get started. Designing a cover is a topic a lot of people have asked me about but I also want to include you more in my own artistic journey and as you know I'm a very prolific creator. I want to bring out my first poetry book this year and I will do a live stream where I design the cover live but in this video I will cover the basics of how to design a book cover. Let's look at Google Images and this is the first advice I want to give you. Always take inspiration from other designers because it is a shortcut to make great designs but it also helps you avoid a lot of mistakes. When we look at these covers here you often have a free space where you can put text and that is very important because this is one of the beginner mistakes that people choose pictures that are a lot too busy and then you can't read the text. In this example you can see that the food is surrounding the text but in the middle of the table there's a little bit of spot free where we can put our text. You can still put the food as the center of the cover but above it or below it there is still enough free space for the text to be easily read. Let's go to the next part of designing a book cover. Choosing the font. There are some rules. They are actually pretty simple to understand, a little bit harder to put into practice. The first very easy rule is never use more than two different kinds of fonts. In very, very extreme cases you can use three kinds of fonts uh, but it already makes it a bit complicated. Another thing you can see here is that when you use a fancy font like this one, the bigger font, you want to even it out by combining it with a simpler font like you can see down here for example. The third thing that you can also see here is that you have here these parts sticking out of the font and these are called serifs. So you can find serif font and then you can also also find sans serif font which means without serifs and down here the simpler font is also a sans serif font. The next rule for combining fonts is when you have a fat font you want to combine it with a thin font again to even it out. By the way use a fat font because you want people to be able to read the text. Especially in online stores it will be the size of a stamp and also use a font that's easy to read. Another thing I want to show you here is from the design of the plate and from the design of this vintage silver fork the choice of the font also reflects that as in it is kind of a vintage looking font and the rest of the design also supports that idea. You might maybe ask at this point why are all these designs so simple and this is actually a very good advice to give especially for beginners. Do a simple design. The first reason is if you do complicated design you can do a lot more mistakes. So to avoid these mistakes and make life a lot easier for you go with a simple design. And the second and even more important reason is that a simple design in most cases makes it very easy to give a very clear message to your readers. You want to inspire an emotion when they see the cover but at the same time you want to give them a very clear message of what it is they will find inside of the book. Let's switch to Affinity Publisher. There we are. Let's go to new and I will say print A6 which is a European size. And by the way I'm not going into getting it ready for print because that's a completely different a bit more complicated topic. The bleed and the margins are already set up by the program. We will go with that. That's okay. And there we have our empty canvas. Now the first thing I would suggest is that you search for a picture because the rest can build on that picture. Go over to Unsplash and there you will find a lot of pictures that you can actually use for free for commercial uses in your book cover. Let's uh, search for cook. Cooking of course gives us a lot of the cooking process 
and you can see here for example this photo here it has a lot of free space on the side uh, for example here with this picture you can just move this into one corner or to the side of the book and then put a solid color or a gradient behind that to make this background bigger let's go with this picture because this is very nice to use you want to have of course a picture that fits the rotation of your book cover is it horizontal is it vertical of course the picture needs to be able to support that okay let's go to file and place and there we have our file boom now that we have the picture in publisher we need a font and i can suggest two pages for you to look up fonts one is called 1001fonts.com and there you can find free commercial use fonts they have a special category for that or you can go over to da font where when you click on a category up here you can go to more options and click on 100 percent free and then it will only show all the fonts that you can use also commercially for free you can of course also purchase a font if you want to i already decided on a font it's called ballad harmony and you just download it as a zip file and when you open the zip file like that it has a file that says .ttf or some have other endings simply click double click on that and it will ask you do you want to install it you click on install and then you have the font in your software i have already done that by the way let's go back to affinity publisher and here we have our picture and of course we need to find some space where we can put our text this seems to be a little bit narrow so that what i want to do is to rotate the picture to the side but then you can see here we have some white background sticking out so i'm using a little trick to that so i don't have to go into photo editing i am rotating my picture to the side because you can see here we have some gray background here and I will duplicate the layer right click duplicate and then when I have done that I go to layer transform flip horizontal and this will simply switch it to the other side when I hold my shift key I move it to the left until it docks to the end of the other picture so now I have basically a seamless connection to the other picture where just this background is prolonged basically. I will select both of these and then press Ctrl G like George to create a group and now if I rotate my picture by the way you can zoom in and out by holding Ctrl and rotating your mouse wheel. So now when I rotate this you can see I can move it around. I have, of course, look out for things that might stick into my design. Let's go a little bit closer here. And I want to put it maybe like this, maybe a bit less rotation here. Um, yeah, like this looks good. Gives me a lot of space for my text. Good. So let's create the text. And here I want to show you some tricks that you can use. And one of the rules that I often use in design is if in doubt, go with the center of your design. So first of all, I will create the title. I decided on the title, The Taste of Summer. What I want to do is to put every word in its own layer. The reason for that is so I can arrange them afterwards a lot easier so let's write the and then click on my move tool click on the text tool again and write summer and then um, actually i can just click down here write off and then also write taste another trick you can use for design is that you simply color pick one of the colors in your design so click up here on the font color use your color picker and choose any color you like down here we have a nice pink in that area let's click again and this is very well readable you can click on the other font here and click on this dot again so this will also use that color and for the other one i set it up with a gray as you can see here uh, the difference is if you go completely black 
you can see that this looks a bit harsh. It looks a bit too extreme. So I would suggest in most of the cases not to go with a complete black color if you have a design like that and rather choose a, a, like a darker gray. Let's go with 46 as we had before. So now we have the question of how to arrange these so it looks good. And again, I would go with centering things. So what I would do here is maybe let's make the word taste a little bit bigger. It's more important. These two are not as important, so we can make them actually smaller. Uh, let's go with a size, let's say here, let's say 24. So it's pretty small, but we can still read it very well. 24 over here. And now I want to help me with a guideline that I will pull up from here downwards and center it on my taste word. If you don't see the ruler up here, go to view and then you can see here show rulers. So you can pull out guidelines from the ruler. This is very helpful to have. So we have some additional lines here. These are the margin lines, but I can move over to another part here, take my guideline with me, and then I can take the the and I can take the off and move it to the side. You might ask me why I'm not simply selecting all of these layers and use my align tool. The problem is here when you see when I click on align middle, it has the problem that it's using the fonts, but the design might not actually present me with the center of the font and rather move it too high or too low. So it's better in these cases to do it by hand. So let's go with the off and move that down a little bit. Uh, so this looks good. Also find a position. So this is where you can see the lower end of the the connects with the upper end of the T of taste. That's good. And now let's find something visually pleasing for the off on the left side. Although I think this position maybe a little bit over like that seems to look good. Okay. So now we can put all of these in a group. So click on the upper layer, hold shift, click on the lower layer. So all of these three layers are selected and then press control G on your keyboard to create a group. You might wonder why is there such a strange look here now in the design, because this is the design view. You can also go to preview, you go on view and then on preview mode and there you see just the canvas again. So this is very helpful. One thing to look out for is don't put things too close to the edge of your design. The reason for that is as soon as you see it printed on paper or as soon as you have it in your device where there is a physical end to it, it suddenly feels very cramped. So you want to put as much distance as possible between the edge of your canvas and the words in your design. Okay, so let's pull this down here. You see, this is giving me a center line automatically. It's snapping to the center of the page. We can resize it. You can hold the control key. So when you resize it, it uh, resizes around the center of your selected object. Make this here maybe a little bit bigger so we can fit this kind of snugly in here. At least it gives us a good look. You can see here's a little bit of overlap. So we are going to readjust our background, maybe like this, put that down here like that. Okay, let's look at the design completely. Let's move this up a little bit. And of course we need uh, the text, the name of the author. For that, we're gonna use another font, a simple font in that case. So let's select our font tool and I will use Open Sans, which is a very nice and also free font. And we will say this is by the good old singer, John Lemon. I know his name is not John Lemon, but Lemon. Okay, that's kind of funny. There we go. Okay, let's go with the thin version of that. Here we have bold, regular, that's not good. Light, there's the light version. Good, let's use that, make it a lot smaller. 
put it here in the center away from the sides of our um, print so not here but maybe more down here in that area um, we will copy this down here and of course we have to write that this is a cookbook make this bigger also in the center now we have an additional element down here this up a little bit now between this text and the picture down here okay I would say we are done we have a very pleasing and simple cover that gives us a good idea what the book is about thank you very much for watching if you have more questions put them in the comments and see you in the next video bye